I really like doing what I want to do. And then I like being able to say no to things that I don't want to do. The main thing that comes with giving up a piece of your independence is not being able to say no. It really isn't no deeper than that for me. So I think I just want to, I want to inspire people to, to not be okay with being told what to do. You can't grow like that. How you gonna constantly, how you gonna grow if the motherfuckers constantly, no, no, stay down, stay down. So before people decide they want to do deals and they want to, um, they want to take these large amounts of money and they want to collab with this person, that person. I want people to really sit and think about, like, you feel me? Are they going to be okay with not being able to control the shit that they want to do? I feel like fuck it at the same time. I don't know what I can trust it. Now look what I'm stuck with. I was making money selling beats, like, in high school, middle school. But that's, like, a lot of how I got my friends, like, when I was young. Like, it'd be, like, grown motherfuckers coming to the house, like, to get beats off me and shit. My parents were like, who are these grown adults coming by the house, like, to... Like, what is this going on? Like, but people like my music. And then I moved out to LA, stayed out there for maybe a couple months before I signed my first publishing deal. And then everything started rolling after that. That's the first time my parents actually saw that you could make a living off doing something that you love to do versus applying for a job and getting paid that way. But from there, I was releasing music on SoundCloud. My stuff started gaining like a little bit of traction when I started singing, because before then I was rapping. d -Pat reached out to me. Him and I too were part of Selection. And they said they wanted to work with me, so we got in the studio um, when they came out to LA, and that's how Sonder happened from there. We put the band together because we needed a name for the project we was making. Like, we can't just drop a project under Brent, I2, and D-Pad. It just doesn't have no ring to it. So we named the band Sonder after my tattoo. SoundCloud for us, it really just was the launch, the launch pad. It was a starting point. Because that was around the time when things were starting to shift from SoundCloud to like the pay for streaming platforms. So it was an exposure tool more than anything. It was almost like YouTube was originally, like when it was just a place for people to put stuff out. It definitely lets you know what was hot and what wasn't for real. Brent's creative vision around visuals. He's the best out there. I think, you know, Kanye is brilliant. And I think outside of Kanye, it's Brent. Labels, ironically, want to sign artists who don't need to be signed. Like, it's almost like we see you already doing well on your own. We see your popularity. Like, now let me jump on the bandwagon and sign you, which really don't make no sense. So to me, I was just like, I see the type of game they playing. Like, it's not really about talent. It's more about, like, what your streams look like, what your numbers look like, what your shows look like. I thought that if I was really, really, really good, somebody would want to do a fair deal with me because of my talent, but that's not really how it worked. So once I saw that, that classic story, people want to help you push your car when they see you already outside pushing it, it was that type of thing. So once I didn't need a label no more is when they reached out trying to do good deal. I remember early on, like, one of the greatest challenges was, like, having to compromise my artistic vision because financially I wouldn't be able to afford the shit that I wanted to do. And I thought that that was just going to be the case because I was independent up until I realized that that's just the case in all businesses. Having to kind of minimalize whatever grandiose creative vision that you have in order to pay for what the fuck it is that you really need. But now I'm like really on top of being able to execute a creative bit vision within a budget. And I think that's like my strength right now. Not only just that, but also how to how to see a project out from start to finish. So to be able to kind of put it through that incubation process and then watch it like till it's completely done, I think is like the, the, the most I don't know, I love everything about it. The struggle of being independent is that you have to really, the budget is the Bible. You can't afford to like lose $50,000 or $100,000 on a music video that you might not like. You probably can't even afford to spend that much money on the music video. So the biggest struggle that me and Brent always had is like the money. And for a young talent, when they're like seeing everybody else's that's signed to a major label have these big videos, it's natural to be like, why, why I can't have a big video? Why I can't have the same budget? Uh, and it took time for him to learn. Now he has his own staff, he has artists. So now he gotta be like, hey, you know, do you, are, are you gonna let that artist spend two hundred thousand dollars and then say they don't want to put a video out? And it's like, absolutely no. Like, okay then. It, so the backlash at the time grew a smarter executive. All these people always lie or something. Sorry, I'm so fly, so what? After Wasteland came out and we, we went number two, we had lost to Bad Bunny. I kept thinking of like how I was gonna take it further, like where I was gonna go next. How can I make sure I don't never come number two again? So the label conversations came up again. So I was like, shh, let me see what they talking about now. It's been damn near 10 years since I met with these motherfuckers. Let me see what type of braid they talking about now. So now the conversations were completely different. But when I rap with Stout, I realized the importance of like independence, right? The principles I 
built the business around was give the artist freedom, give the artist control. The artist should own their future. That was like, no matter what we did, I wanted the artist to feel like with us, they own their future. They never felt any control. They felt like they were in control. And our job was to develop business tools and provide business acumen to help them navigate through the world of independent music. I had been independent for so long that I unintentionally became like an important figure for people who are independent artists, right? So I'm like, nah, I can't go to no label. So Stout kind of was like, bro, like, fuck with me over at UM. We can make this shit shake. I'll give you the budget, whatever you need. Like, boom, boom. So I'm like, it was a no brainer at that point. When it comes to me creatively executing my vision, they let me do what the fuck I want to do. What he was looking for was a partner to provide him financial capital to go into other ventures that were creative. And being that I own a, so a creative advertising company and as an entrepreneur have played across many different industries, I think that was the synergy that brought us together. Uh, uh, uh. From the project from Larger Than Life, I kind of had like a, I guess like a feeling, like I had like a, a way that I was feeling when I was working on a project like larger than life, like I felt like shit was gonna be big, shit is growing, shit can be, there's no ceiling, you know? So I feel like if you constantly growing, 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 then you gonna end up being bigger than everything. So that's like really where I got it from. The process when we were making the project was a, was like blendings of different worlds. One day Adele pull up, one day Rocky pull up, next day Big Sean pull up, next day Timbaland pull up, next. So the fact that it's all these different ideas kind of like merging together and then there's like mutual people that know motherfuckers that kind of know motherfuckers there's no gate you know what i'm saying it's like the it's the antithesis of that it's like a bridge everybody on iso and what we do is like the entire idea of it is to change lives that's the whole point like it's more it's like how many how many people can we put on how many people can we put in position how many checks can we put in niggas pockets that's what's the most important and then from there it's like there's nothing that we can't do because we don't touch it on every level I think I just, I want to show people that creativity is an ongoing thing, right? I don't want creators to feel like they got to be stuck in a box in order to to succeed or feel like they have to fit into any particular mold or, or approach a, a career any particular way, whether that's being a, uh, on a label or that's making a certain genre of music or whatever, like, you can make whatever you want to make. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be labeled this, it don't have to be labeled that, it doesn't have to even make sense. And I think that's what I really want to promote. It's just that freedom of creativity in every shape and form. And then I like the independent shit because we can really pay motherfuckers for what they deserve. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm excited to really take like creatives who may not otherwise have an audience or be able to pay bills or whatever and be like, yo, like here's a crazy check to get this shit done. That's fun as shit. That's the funnest shit ever. I've seen the finest times. But all the pretty girls definitely ain't. What we set out to do was to create a company that can protect both of us and it can invest into the things that we want to do in the future. So that's what Lost Kids has really formed into, right? It protected his copyrights, it protected my work, it protected all of our efforts, the, our overall legacy, and now it's invested into the things that we want to do in the future. So on a high-end level, everybody that came up with us got rich. Way to put it. Do I feel like people just do what, what we see has been done so many times and worked already that now I'm realizing how important it is to break the mold so that like people can see my story and see what we did and be like, all right, I can do that. It's just another way to go about it. It don't really gotta be so, you know, black and white. The thing I want people to take away from it isn't necessarily something that they can take away right now. I think it's like, I want people to be excited about what's coming next. So, you know, yeah, scratch that. I want people to, I want people to look forward to what's coming. I don't want people to take away nothing. Yet. If you catch something that you can apply, cool, like, but I'm still like just getting started. It's not like takeaway time yet.